so it's it was it was interesting for me to um for the first time you know in a in 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 a long time, um, livelihoods didn't automatically mean self-employment. Um, that's, that's something I've, I've thought about pretty hard. I mean, 50% of India is self-employed already. We have too much self-employment. And, and I may represent a particular point of view, which is, around which is around employability and employment as a solution, as supply, high quality supply creating its own demand in, in the world. Of, of employment. You know, a lot of people believe there's a birth defect in the Indian labor market, so um, employment is really not a solution which we should be navigating towards, and, and I obviously disagree with that. What, what I will agree is that, you know, our, our GDP is, is probably going to get to a trillion dollars. Um, it'll double in the next 10 years. So why doesn't it feel right? It doesn't feel right, obviously, because growth is a necessary but not sufficient condition for poverty reduction. You know, poverty reduction comes from access. And the access today is being created by India's labor market going through five transitions. There's a farm to non-farm transition, there's a rural to urban transition, unorganized to organized, subsistence self-employment to decent wage employment, and school to work. Most of these five transitions in my head, and some of you may disagree, represent journeys to a better life for most Indians, um, but they're not working. And um, I think the context is important. You know, we're a, we're a people supply chain company running out of inventory. So I had a client of mine screaming at me uh, of, as recent as almost a year ago um, in telecom client saying, we have 500 open positions in sales, why are you not filling them in? And I said, well, your hiring standards are too high. Um, we're doing it for all your competitors. So he said, okay, I'll call you at lunchtime. And he called me at lunch and said, I need a pair of hands. I don't care if a brain comes attached. And we filled in those open positions in two days. But um, on the other side, you know, we held a job mela in Jaipur um, with, the job go with the government. We took about 200, 300 employers. And 35,000 people showed up that day. And I was the only guy waiting for a suit for like 10 kilometers. So 1,000 of them came up to me. And uh, I can guarantee if 800 of those kids were born in Delhi, Bombay, or Bangalore, they would have had a job. But you know, it's the ovarian lottery. You know, they were born in Dosa or Barmer or Junjunu, where they just have no access to what are the jobs or what kind of skills they need, and or just don't have the skills. And so, we spend a lot, a lot of time on the on the whole skilling issue as as uh, as our binding constraint. And and there is a market failure in skill development because. Employers are not willing to pay for training or candidates, they're willing to pay for trained candidates. Candidates are not willing to pay for training, they're willing to pay for a job. Financiers are not willing to lend to candidates unless a job is guaranteed. And training companies are unable to fill up classrooms even though some of them are now spending 30% of their revenues on, um, on marketing. So there obviously is a problem here. So the theoretically elegant construct of there's so many jobs and there's so many people, why isn't it sorting it out? And if we want to repackage our human capital as a demographic dividend, I think reform lifts all the boats, but some reforms makes those boats seaworthy. So there's a radical revamp of our 3E ecosystem, education, employability, and employment. And I, and I didn't spend too much time on education um, till about a year ago because I felt, you know, we don't have a dog in this fight. But now I'm realizing that you don't, you can't really unpack the three E's very much because they're, they're very closely related. And there are three problems in India's um, human capital ecosystem. There's a matching problem, which is really connecting demand and supply. There's a job in Delhi and there's a candidate in Alwar. There's a mismatch problem, which is repairing supply for demand. And there's a pipeline problem, which is preparing supply for demand. And I distinguish between repair and prepare very strongly and very, very precisely. So innovation will happen at the intersection of public, private, NGO, financing, delivery, and certification, and education, employment, and employability. So vocation training will work, or skill development work, if you convert it into a job with fine print, in my world. I think the context is important. You know, there's a very low penetration of education. You know that they're very low and uneven returns. You know, 58% of graduates make less than 6,500 rupees a month. So they're very low returns. The quantity versus quality trade-off. You know, our ayatollahs of education have tried to control quality by controlling quantity, and we've ended up with neither. And I think that trade-off has to be calibrated a little differently. Our regulatory ecosystem is focused on accreditation, which is inputs, but outcome light. The 10 plus 2, 3 system is 
is interesting, it, but it has very few on and off ramps and really doesn't account for the multiple intelligences, which the complexity of our economy, if you view jobs as SKUs, we have 15,000 SKUs which we hire for, and our education system probably produces for less than a tenth of that. They're not really work ready when they come out. In a Jodhpur job mail, I remember a, a candidate kept shoving his BA in English certificate in my face and I kept talking to him in English but he would answer me in Hindi and I said, look, English is a vocational skill, just answer me in English and he said, I have done BA English Hindi in Hindi. You know, and he could write, I made him sit down and write but he just was not confident to converse with me in English. And I think the delivery systems, the way it's architected right now are, are, are sabotaging the whole um, employability rather than just, you know, learning for earning versus learning for a living. I'll, I'll come to that later. In employability, it's clear. We, we don't link our financing to outcomes. Um, we pay for input rather than jobs. Our financing is only, public financing is only available for public delivery. So if public financing being made available for private deliveries is a new thing. But if, if public delivery is the only way public money can be spent, then they don't have clients, they have hostages, and they, they act like uh, that. Repair is different from prepare. We can't teach somebody in six months what they should have learned in 15 years, but we can do a lot in six months. We run, we run, we run a 10-day course, which is just take a bath, cut your hair, get rid of your body odor, look at me in the eye, tuck your shirt in, to stuff three months, to stuff goes up to six months. It's not self-healing, the current system. So if you take the national occupation codes, 90% of them need uh, knowledge, while 90% of the jobs out there probably need skills. So there's a huge mismatch between what we think um, are the skills and where we think the jobs are, um, are still fighting yesterday's war. The entry gate versus exit gate. So you can be like the IITs and IAMs with tight entry gates and wide open exit gates. Or you can be like the chartered accountant exam with wide open entry gates and tight exit gates. But today vocational training in India has wide open entry gates and wide open exit gates. So the signaling value of certification is very low. Apprentices, we only have 250,000 apprentices in this country because of the Stupid Apprenticeship Act, which was written in 1961. You know, popcorn stand, you know, Germany has 12 lakh apprentices, Japan has 6 lakh apprentices. Learning by earning and learning by doing is a very powerful way of doing skill development. And the speed limit for on-the-job training expansion is much higher than the speed limit for classroom expansion, but we, are, we haven't taken advantage of that. The center regulates and state delivers. This is, this is true of most human capital stuff. You know, I can have a meeting in Delhi, and I did a few months ago with DGT, where they said, we center, we've got brilliant programs for skill development, the PPP program, the excellence program, but the states are just screwing up execution. And, and we run an ITI in Jaipur, or we, we help them. And, this, and I go to them the same day, and he says, what are you talking about? We are still teaching automobile engineering with a carburetor. No Indian car is made with a carburetor. An electrician still has to be certified on a 220-volt DC fan. India hasn't had DC for, for 40 years. So I think a little bit of a policy orphan fault. The person developing the strategy or controlling the money is different from the person executing. And there's a clear market failure, as I mentioned. 